you see I came from a very interesting background my grandfather was the founding fathers of one of the great denominations in the north um, and so I came from a very solid Christian background I didn't have the opportunity to do many things it was God all the way straight up but then there were many things that I saw and discerned as God began to prepare to use me that I knew were not correct the gap in our spiritual understanding the many propositions that could not be defended I heard preachers say many things about God that could not be defended we sang songs we made proclamations we made boastful statements we claim the nearness of God, but our results showed that he was far from us. And so that bothered me for a while. I didn't want to be a preacher. I wanted to be someone who would be a witness, a demonstrator of the reality of God to a generation. And that still is my pursuit. I only found out that preaching is one of the routes that makes that happen. And so I, I, every time I have the privilege by God's spirit, to minister to God's people I truly am careful the information that I give people because I have a conscience that will be vetted by God himself I cannot supply an information that may just be right it must be truthful and so I found a way to vet my revelations by making myself the first guinea pig to every truth that comes from heaven the things that I want to share with you, I submit to you in the name of the Lord. And I don't mean to insult your intelligence. Like I observed yesterday, this is a collection of a very enlightened people. And by no means am I trying to downplay your intellectual investments. But when it has to do with spiritual things, it is important to understand that flesh and blood cannot reveal this to you. It says, who do men say that I am? And he says, I know who thou art. Thou art the Christ, the son of the living God. Jesus replies, Peter, and says, it's flesh and blood. There are realms of revelation that are not within the confines of flesh and blood. You must route it from a dimension higher than science, higher than intellect. It will make use of science. It will make use of intellect, but it does not come from there. Hallelujah. The first spiritual principle that I want to share this morning is called the law of the mind. Mighty God. The law of the mind. Psalm 78 and verse 41. I'll be as fast as I can so that we are done in good time. Psalm 78 and verse 41. Please read for me if you, are, if you can see it. One, two, read. Yea, they turned back and tempted God. Uh-huh. And limited the Holy One of Israel. For many years I read this scripture and it disturbed me. That a man can limit God. That is a statement that doesn't sound correct. Until I found out this principle and this spiritual law that I teach you. That a possibility exists in this kingdom where men can limit God are we together although heaven is his throne the earth his footstool where can a man hide from his presence the psalmist said but that there is something a man can do in the earth that can limit the God of the universe and make him look as though powerless I found the cure for my limitations in this revelation I found out that my experience is not a reflection of God's power the lack of results that come in my life and remain in my life are not proof of God's incompetence. That there is something about my in-understanding and, on, and lack of knowledge that can cause the most high to be limited. They limited the Holy One of Israel. The law of the mind. Please write it down. Everything in life is built twice to last. It must first be built in the realm of the spirit. I 
can then build physically that anything that does not have a foundation in the realm of the spirit and ever appears physical will have to disappear it's a spiritual law and so god designed man now i've heard all kinds of teachings that man is a spirit he's a soul and he's a body well i agree but i disagree i thoroughly disagree no man is tripartite in operation but man is not tripartite man is a spirit that spirit lives in a body but that spirit cannot operate with the body because they are in two different dimensions and so there has to be a system of connecting both dimensions and god created an agency called a mind are we together to interface the realm of the spirit and the physical realm that becomes the system of connection between the spirit and the body so it gives that man duality of realms that means he can relate in the realm of the spirit and the physical realm so man is a spirit that spirit is hosted in a container called the body and given the mind containing the will emotions and intellect to be able these are faculties of expression are we together so the spirit can only relate with the body through the mind the only gateway to the body to this realm is the mind the soul is simply a spirit that is conscious because of the mind so you don't separate man into spirit standing one side soul stand one side body stand one side no it's already confusing where what realm does that soul belong to because there are only two realms the spiritual and the physical now you are creating three entities that's where the confusion comes from the soul is still spirit only with an advantage of a faculty of expression to help it relate with the earth realm are we together on that now it is very important because most christians have not learned how to convert and transport spiritual realities from the realm of the spirit to this realm hebrews chapter 11 tells us now faith is the substance of things hoped for it says it is the tangibility the evidence of things not seen it says for by it the elders obtained a good report verse 3 says through faith we understand look at this scripture that the walls the systems were framed they had their tangibility by the word of god but the technology is that the things that were seen came from the things which do not appear that, that's where i'm driving at are we together now so that things that are seen are derived from things that are unseen 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 not unreal unseen unseen by the optical eyes unseen by a dimension not unreal are we together now that means everything that we require is already a reality the fact that you can desire it means it exists please listen you do not have the ability to desire anything that does not exist so the concept of creation is only creation from this realm from the realm of the spirit is only a technology of transportation transporting spiritual realities from a dimension that is not earthly to give it frame in the earth realm are we together you have to understand what i'm teaching because this is how your wealth will come this is how your increase will come this is how the visions that you are seeing will find expression the law of the mind that realities are first formed in that realm of the mind before they find expression in the physical are we together that your life is akin to a mirror and everything you see in the physical is like a mirror you don't remove something from your head by putting your hand in the mirror you correct it here and the mirror corrects itself that means our approach to growth has largely been wrong we attempt to change things physically and like i told you that there is a law that everything that comes to your life is a reflection of what is already in your mind this is powerful and this is true i used two people yesterday can i use them again any two gentlemen please not not our, our ministers 
Thank you. Thank you so much. Please stand here. Please stand here. I, I like to use this example because I want you to understand. Please look up. Let's call this guy a preacher. Everybody say pastor. God forbid in Jesus name. Huh? Let's call this guy an arm robber. Now I'm, I'm just call it in your mind. Don't, don't speak it. Are we together? Now watch this. This guy is busy robbing people destroying people's destinies jumping the fence doing all kinds of things and we call him a robber and then this guy is liberating people causing people to know the things of god and you call him a pastor remember you hate this guy and then you love this guy correct now walk with me let both of them suddenly be dead bodies suddenly the preacher dies this man dies who is on the ground a dead body no who is on the ground a dead body you don't call it a preacher dead body you call it a dead body you don't call it an arm robber dead body you call it a dead body now they have become equal dead bodies so who was really the preacher was it the body the mind a madman still has a spirit but why is he not useful to you because the madness hijacked the interface that makes for sanity between the realm of the spirit is why when jesus saw madness it, it he knew that that madness was a serious he was not just a miracle worker he was a statement that satan would come and interface the bridge between the realm of the spirit and this realm that means i do not have to do anything to your physical body whatever can cause me to stand and hijack the delivery system from the realm of the spirit to this realm i have destroyed you eventually it will be the same thing as cutting the supply of water from a plant it will root out your body will show that your mind died since are we together now the mind the body does not have a will on its own it's a vehicle of execution please understand this that means if this guy robs this guy the body only obeyed an instruction coming from the mind are we together that means the foolish decisions that many of us take the body is innocent the body is obedient so we have to correct the giver of that instruction so that your physical reality now begins to subscribe to a new intelligence are we together now when this guy stands to preach when this guy stands to minister the body is only an executor the preacher is in the mind so who is really poor don't talk and who is really rich who is really educated and who is really dull who is really broken and who is really healed is deception to focus on this physical realm again let me give another example respectfully so have you seen someone who you gave a nice shirt wonderful shirt white just like what our dear pastor is putting on and you gave that person that shirt and in in, in two months I mean that whole thing has been, you are, it's not brown it's not white have you seen those kind of things now let me tell you what happened the the shirt is reflecting the health of the mind are we together and when you gave it to another person the shirt started looking like what is in there please listen to me very truthfully that your mind is very powerful the bible calls it the salvation of your soul that the end of your faith transformation through the renewal of the mind is the culmination of your faith experience that means your being born again is not complete until there is a system of transformation that permits this mind to be in you which was also in Christ Jesus he was speaking to a people who were already saved the impact of your spirit is wonderful but you will still live a useless life until the reality of that transformation finds expression the bible doesn't talk so much about the body 
Because the body is an executor. Are we together now? The real miracle is the mind. Is God speaking to us? Genesis chapter 11, please. Genesis chapter 11. The Bible talks about a man called Nimrod, the son of Cush. And then the Bible says that he led a group of people to build a city and a tower whose top will reach the heavens. Correct? Now, this morning, I'm not arguing about the theological, the whole debate, whether it was a spiritual building or physical. We know there was a building. And there is a morale there. Let's go to verse 4, please. Or verse 3. Let's start from verse 3. Genesis 11, please, and verse 3. Someone is changing. And they said to one another, Goto, let us make brick and burn them thoroughly. And they had brick for stone and slime they had for mortar. Verse 4. And they said, now listen, they've not started the building. Nimrod Kush is proposing like a manifesto. Gentlemen, let's come together and build something that will reach the heavens. And he says, whose top may reach unto the heavens, let us make a name. Lest we be scattered abroad upon the face of the earth. If you're a Christian, look at verse 5. One, two, read with me, please. Keep it at verse 5. While they were discussing, God was seeing a building rising. And God said, who is building? God saw that the construction had finished. It's in your Bible. They had not laid one physical block. But in the realm of the spirit, as their minds were receiving it, what God was seeing is a structure finished. The Bible says God came down. Remember, Satan is not in this scripture. The Holy Ghost is not in this scripture. Only men and the power of the minds he gave them. I show you how you can build that business. Because when God talks to you, he talks like he's talking to himself. He will tell you, take over Lagos. And as he's talking to you, you don't know that he's giving you Lagos already. But the technology to make it real is what I show you. Please keep that scripture there. The Lord came down to see the city and the tower which the children of men built dead. Finished. Done. You argue with that. Let's go to the next verse. Verse 6. Here is God testifying. Ready? Please read. <laughs> and the Lord said, Behold, the people is one. And all have one language. Now listen. And this they begin to do. Stop. Now he's talking to their realm. I saw that the people is one. And they are about to do what was finished. And now nothing. Nothing will be restrained from them which they have. Talk to me. So the Bible says in Ephesians chapter 3 verse 20. Please give it to us. It says now unto him that is able to do exceedingly abundantly far above all we or think. Now listen. Ask or think. Ask or think. If I say sit here or here, it means either way carries equal value. That means there are two prayer warriors in your life. Your mind and your mouth are both praying. That God is a listener to two dimensions of prayer request. The one that comes from your lips changed my life. And the one your mind says, don't bother again, Lord, I'm comfortable. Is saying that God is able to do whatever they are saying. Were you ever taught that your mind is a prayer warrior? That it consistently sends requests about your destiny to the throne. Can do above all we ask, not and think or think. So could your situation be an answered prayer? Is it possible that the lack of growth is God honoring you? For the several requests that continue to go from your mind to heaven. Keep us this way, oh God. And he says, I gave you a will and I must honor it. Your mouth says, I'm rising. But your mind says, it's alright, just I changed my mind. Are we together? They limited the Holy One. They limited the Holy One. 
the holy one wanting to reveal his multifaceted possibilities but the channel that gives him expression to the earth realm was limited by a man's understanding this is very powerful believers hear me many spiritual people will never succeed because of this simple reason success is not really in doing success is attracted by the transition that happens in your mind which is a reflection of what you are becoming every realm of spiritual understanding and mental development has possibilities that accrue to that realm an attempt to attract a reality that is higher than your mental level is only like pulling a rubber ring it will go back that's why many of our results are short-lived they did not come with growth they only came with desire and sometimes ego if you have 200 members and there are 1,000 members here it's impossible for them to remain 200 they must match it's a law not invented by science invented and maintained by God's own integrity show me a man who stays in one tiny room with no privilege let your mind you see the beautiful thing is that you don't need a visa to travel here you don't need to go to any consular office you can dream with God and he takes you to that realm this is the technology of growth the Holy Ghost takes your mind to your future the moment your mind gets there it comes and takes your body to go and join it so anywhere listen when you stop moving is because your mind stopped traveling please believe what I'm telling you realities are first fear a man who has arrived in his mind because God testifying said no power in existence sustains the ability to stop such a man could that man be you this morning who has gone with God to dimensions I know that it looks like nothing good can come out of Nazareth I know as it is right now there's no testimony hmm. Nathaniel said can anything good come out of Nazareth and Jesus at age 12 was in the temple traveling traveling the word traveling hmm. please listen to me if you're a businessman here this is a very powerful secret it will never come just by trying to you know do a lot of physical things leave all of that you don't need to be embarrassed that you cannot buy the shoe now there's no shame there anybody who laughs at you is ignorant and they do not understand the power of transition that comes in life why fake what can be real stay and travel with God and watch him lift you sometimes overnight is God speaking to us any successful person who is very honest and open with you will tell you that once upon a time they never they they did not know how this will happen all they knew was that god said it and i believe it and he begins to indoctrinate their understanding that's why he shows you dreams because we think in pictures when your mind captures it it's impossible for you to leave it so whilst you are sitting here he shows you the nations watching you minister watching your products go beyond the shores of this country and Africa and while he's doing that you don't know anybody while he's doing that not even your neighbor is interested in what you offer don't mind your neighbor he doesn't hate you he's only ignorant finish your business with God and I tell you a generation will stand as attention to honor the God see please listen 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 believe what I'm telling you and you stop being angry at your environment the real secret of success is you and God not what you do who you are what you do will continue to become who you are that's why promotion never blesses people sustainably they grow I'm, I'm not insulting you 
A lot of people say once I'm promoted, then they are promoted and then nothing really happens. Then they change a job, nothing really happens. Because the law is that it will always reflect you. But grow here. Leave the chains around you. Just keep growing. And you watch the power of the laws of the spirit. He has broken the gates of brass and cut the bars of iron in sunder. Is there any chain that can hold a man who has grown out here? The Bible says, why we look not at the things that are seen, but we look at the things unseen. Look at the things unseen because they can be seen. For the things that are seen are temporal, subject to change. Ah, rejoice not over me, oh. Rejoice not over me. Don't, don't rejoice that nobody has a job in our family. No problem. Don't rejoice that it's joblessness that is making you a faithful worker in church. You are such a jobless young man. You are moving around. You would have been married now, but look at this. This ushering thing is killing your destiny. And you feel stupid for being an usher. Keep watching. When God is done with you, eh? He will not only lift you, he will restore you. You see that? Bring you to a position as though nothing, no lag ever happened in your life. Your enemy opens the office and there you are seated, even praying in tongues. He says it's a joke. He says it's not a joke. God is a lifter. And he has brought me here. Please, I want you to guard your mind jealously. No matter what happens to you, we build garages for our cars, we build stores and wardrobes for our clothes, but we don't build a protection for our minds. A car will come and go. Your clothes will come and go. Preserve your mind, for out of it comes the issues of life. Are we together?